Welcome back to Blender Daily. A few days ago I created this short animation that you can see right here. I thought it might be interesting to create a tutorial on how I made the character. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. But instead of flowers we are going to add screws to the character. Let's get started. Okay, so let's start off with a clean Blender file. And the first thing we want to do is to create all the screws. This is a really easy task in Blender since we have a pre-installed add-on that allows you to quickly generate screws. So to find this, just go to Edit, Preferences, and in the Add-ons tab, search for Bolt Factory. Then just make sure that this checkbox is ticked so that the add-on is enabled. And if you have done so, you can just press Shift A and under mesh you should now find this bolt option. This will bring in a screw that we can fully customize with this menu in the bottom left corner. So for example we could change it to a knot, um, we can change the bit type which is this indent on top, we can change the form of the head and adjust all those other values like the length and other stuff. So the goal now is to just create a few different variations of this screw, I'd say around 10 different, um, so that we can then distribute them on our character. So I'm going to speed this part up and you can just create your own variations of different screws, all created with this Bolt Factory add-on. Okay, so my screws are all ready and what I want to do next is select all of them and right click to shade them smooth. Now they look a bit weird, so what I also want to do is go to the object data properties and under normals enable auto smooth. So now when I do this you can see that it only affects the active object and not all the selected objects. So if you want to select, uh, if you want to affect all the selected objects, you have to hold down Alt while you enable Auto Smooth, and it will affect all of them. So the next thing I want to do is also bring this origin point that is now on the bottom of all the objects into the middle of the individual objects. To do so, I go to this Object menu, and under Set Origin, select Origin to Geometry. Okay, so now all those models are ready and the next thing is to give them a material. So I'm going to switch to material preview and also open up a shader editor right here. Select this one, give it a new material and call this metal. Then also bring the metallic to a value of one, maybe bring down the roughness just a bit and I want to apply this to all the objects, so I select them and press Ctrl L and link the materials from the active objects, object so they all have the same shader. Now I don't want all the objects to have exactly the same color, so in the shader editor I press Shift A and under input bring in an object info node. Now I can use this random output for the base color so each object gets a random value. This is already better, however I don't like that uh, there are those completely black objects. So I'm going to use a Shift A, a color ramp node. Bring this in here between the object info and the principal PSDF node and just bring up the black values a bit. Maybe also take the value, white values down a bit to adjust this. And I think this looks pretty good. This is usable, so let's create a new collection for them. I'm gonna call this bolts, select all the objects, bring them into this collection, and we don't need to see those objects anymore, so we can just disable this collection. And I think this is probably a good time to save our file, so I'm gonna go to file, save as and save this to my computer. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is to bring in our character. 
So for the character, I went to Mixamo.com, which is a really cool website where you can download free characters and get corresponding animations. So here I chose the mannequin character and under animations, I'm just gonna search for dancing and look for an animation that I like. So maybe just try out a few different ones. Uh, this one could be good. Maybe another one. Yeah, I think that's a good animation. So you don't have to use the same as I do. You could choose any of those animations and then just go to download, leave it on the default settings, click download again, and just save it to your computer. Now back in Blender, to import it, go to File, Import, FBX, and select the animation that we just downloaded. So now we have this character in here, and if I play the timeline, you can see that this is animated. And this animation that I downloaded is only 142 frames long. However, my timeline is longer. So I'm just gonna type this in here, 142, to adjust it. And now they both match. Okay, so we can select the armature, only the armature for now, and press H to hide it, since we don't need to see this anymore. And I don't really like the shader that we have now. So I'm going back into the shader editor, delete this material, and just create a new one. Call this character. Let's make this metallic. Also bring down the roughness. And I think the color is okay. Yeah, so that's it. So let's continue with adding the screws to the character itself. So for, we're going to do this with geometry nodes. So let's open up a new window, switch this to the geometry node editor and with the character selected, create a new node tree. Now, in order to distribute those, uh, those screws on the character, we need to use a shift A point point distribute node. Bring this in here and as you can see, we get a lot of those, those little points that are distributed along the mesh of our character. Now we can turn those points into the screws with a point instance node. So bring this in here, switch this to collection, turn off whole collection and select our bolts collection. So now we have all the bolts distributed along our mesh. However, they are currently way too big. So let's bring down the scale. However, I don't want all the screws to have exactly the same scale. So we want to randomize those values a bit. So for this, we press shift A and under attribute, bring in an attribute randomize node. Bring this between the two points, point nodes and for the attribute we're gonna use, or we're gonna type in scale. And I think this should be minimum 0.2 and maximum, maybe let's try 0.4. This is already better, but I think it is still too big. So let's make it 0.3. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, so now this is better. However, I don't like that all the screws are pointing in the same direction. So let's also randomize the rotation. So Shift A attribute and bring in another attribute randomize node. Change this from float to vector and just type in rotation, point rotation, and bring the maximum value to 360 degrees, so we get completely random rotations on those screws. And we can also press the spacebar to play this animation and see what this currently looks like. Now if we want to change the density, of those screws, you can go to the point distribute node and play with this density value. 
Now here you can see that we only have the screws and not the character itself anymore. So if we want to bring this back, press Shift A and under Geometry, bring in a joint geometry node. And now combine the screws with the original geometry that we have from this group input node. And now we have both of them. And I also want to bring back up the density. So I think I leave this at the value of 1. And this looks pretty good to me. So let's play the animation again. And I'm really happy with it. So I think it is time to prepare this scene for rendering. So first of all, I want to bring in a background plane. Tap into edit mode. Scale this up a bit. Select this edge in the back and press E set to scale it upwards. Then select the corner, control B to add a bevel and use the mouse wheel to add a few more segments. Maybe select everything S, X to make it a bit wider. And back in object mode, I want to right click and shade this smooth. Okay, so let's bring in a camera. Shift A, camera. And from the front view, I'm just going to press Control, Alt, Numpad 0 to place the camera in the view. And I'm going to scrub through the timeline to check that the character is always in frame. Maybe G set, bring the camera a bit up. And I think this looks pretty good. Okay, so let's see what this looks like in rendered view. And currently this is really bad. And first of all, we are in cycles now, but I want to use EV. So I switch the render engine to EV. And we also don't have any light in the scene. So I want to bring in an HDRI. I go to the world tab, click on this yellow button next to color and select the environment texture. Click on open and Blender actually comes with a few pre-installed HDRIs. If you want to access them, just follow this file path that I have right here. And there you can find all the HDRIs that already come with Blender. I saved this folder to my favorite so I can quickly access it. And here I think I'm going to choose the forest HDRI for this project. So I open it up and now we have light in our scene. I don't like the color of the background, so I select this background plane, go to the material options and give it a new shader. Then under base color, I'm gonna maybe a bit of red or I think blue is probably even better. Yeah, I like this blue. So I'm just gonna give it a slight blue color. And yeah, maybe also adjust a few render properties. So first of all, I want to use ambient occlusion. Maybe make this even stronger. So bring up the distance to 0.5. And we don't need bloom. This doesn't make any difference. But we want to use green space reflections. So we get those blue reflections in the glossy surfaces. And I also want to enable motion blur since the character is moving a lot. A shutter of 0.5, however, is way too high. So let's bring this down to 0.1. And I think that's everything. So let's test it out. Go to the render tab and press F12 to render. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We have just a bit of motion blur. I think maybe we can bring this up even more. So let's make this 0.2. And if you want to, you could also increase the resolution in the output properties. So if you want to use 4K, you can just bring this percentage up to 200%. However, I think uh, full HD is enough. So I just leave it at 100%, which is 1920 by 1080. But what I want to do in the render properties under color management, I want to give this image a bit more contrast. So under look, I'm going to bring this up to, let's say, medium high contrast or probably even high contrast. Yeah, I think this looks just a bit better and I like this contrasty look. So that's probably everything. So let's try, just try another frame. 
Press F12 again and let this render as well. Okay, so now this motion blur looks really good. I think it's good that we increase this a bit. And yeah, so let's render the animation. Let's go to the output properties. First of all, select an output folder where you want to save it. I'm just gonna call this screwman. Accept. Change the file format to FFmpeg video. And I also wanna switch the encoding. Here I can choose a, choose a preset and I'm gonna choose the MP4 preset. And that's already all we have to do. Again, if you want to increase or decrease the resolution, you can do this in here. Otherwise you can leave everything on the default. I think 30 FPS is also okay. So then to render, just go up here to render and choose render animation or press the shortcut control F12. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting and could follow along with me. I am Nick from Blender Daily. See you in the next one.